Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Today we've got a pair of Boston A120s, which uh, according to the customer, don't sound quite right. And as you can see, it has the typical foam rot of a 30 plus year old speaker. And what's weird about these is that I've never seen any with deteriorated mid-range surrounds. The surrounds on the mid-range are always perfect. So let's Yankee the woofer out and then we'll go through a refoam job. Okay, technically I shouldn't say woofer because it really is just a passive. The 120s use the uh, the small driver for a full range and then use this as a passive radiator. Kind of how the Polks do it. So I'm just going to start by very carefully peeling away the gasket. And for the most part, the gasket the, uh, is attached to the foam, which of course is deteriorated. And so removal of this is just a matter of you being careful going around the edge and taking it off. Not a big deal. There are some places where it does get stuck up, and when that happens, I'll take an X-Acto knife and go around the bottom edge here just to loosen that little piece of glue that's holding it in. Continue to peel away. This piece, by the way, is entirely decorative, so it's not necessary that you keep it. But... I always try to preserve the aesthetics where I can. I'm just going to take my thumb. You see that comes apart, but I can reclue that. Take my thumb and uh, go along the edge here. And get rid of all the old bits of foam that are still attached. Okay. And then, of course, do the same thing here. All right, we'll go around the cone here and just scrape away at the old foam. Lovely noises this makes, isn't it? Okay, and then next we'll take our chisel and we'll just go around the edge. Now, if it's deteriorated enough, like this one has, this is an e this is the easy part because this all comes off really easy. Depending on where you live, the atmosphere will affect how this deteriorates. So, in the mountainous region where the air is clearer, this is going to be harder to get off. If you're in the city, it's easier to get off. Now the A120s, if you want to compare them to like the A150s, aren't quite as bass heavy, obviously, because you've got a smaller driver that pushes a passive versus the 150s or the 200s, which just have a straight up woofer. But these are nice little speakers. I think the guy's going to be happy with them when I'm done. to get as much of this old crap off as you can so you have a nice surface to adhere to. We're just looking for a nice smooth surface with no junk left. Okay. A little bit left here. We're getting there. All right, let's go dump this in the trash. Okay, I took a brush and brushed all this out, cleaned it up, cleaned up the edge here. So this is ready for a new surround. Now, when you get Boston surrounds, they are different in the sense that they don't have that secondary lip. You see how the edge of the surround just goes directly onto the cone. There's no secondary lip like there is an outside lip. There's no inner lip. Make sure you get the right ones because this allows the woofer to travel longer distances. And in the case of the radiator, this is very helpful to have when you have low frequencies. Get the correct type. It's not really a price difference. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is we're going to run a bead of evil speaker glue around the edge. 
And because this is a passive radiator, there's no need to worry about a voice coil gap or anything like that, which is really nice. Because that makes the installation so much easier and quicker. And then I'm going to do a similar bead around the inside edge of the basket. Yeah, if you want to start refoaming speakers, try radiators first. That's like really easy. And of course I drip a little tiny bit of spider snot there across the uh, cone. All right, it's coming up at least, that's good. I'll have to get rid of a little bit of that later. All right, and then we'll lay this down and try to center it as best possible on the basket and on the cone. Because remember, you're not worried about voice coils being aligned or anything, it's just a passive. So just center it in the basket, and then I'll bring up the cone with my hand from, under, from the underside and then just try to center this on the, the old area of attachment as possible and just press it down. Now what I'm using is Springfield Speaker Repairs uh, Professional Black Rubberized Adhesive. And there's a couple reasons why I use this stuff for speakers. is because as a speaker adhesive, it's excellent. It has incredibly high strength so that if you want to beat it, 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 will, it will withstand it. It won't come unglued. Uh, secondly, it sets very quickly and it sets tacky so you have an opportunity to mess around and change it while it is drying. And because it dries quickly, this will be set in the next couple of minutes. So while all of this is going on, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just going to uh, get this tamped down. And we'll let this sit for a minute or two. Okay, so after it's set, the next thing we're going to do is reattach the little beauty ring thing that came apart here. And so I'm pretty much just going to treat this like I did uh, with the surround. I'm going to see if I can clean off a little bit more of this stuff without tearing it any further. I don't really want to tear it. We're just getting it clean enough to adhere to. lay down a bead here. Doesn't have to be much, don't go crazy with the glue, just enough to hold it on the basket, or on the surround rather, because it adheres to the surround. Okay. And let's just try our best not to get it stuck to the cone so it leaves a nasty residue. I'm just laying it down in here. Get it all lined up. And just lightly press it down. Try to keep everything in frame here. Center this gasket a little better. Okay. Looking pretty good. This inner part here is already dried, so... We're good to go. You can see that large roll definitely sticks up a bit. So that's number one. Let's pull and uh, do the other one. Okay, there's the next one. And we'll just go ahead and repeat the process. 
around the edge. Fuel up the old gasket. This one's coming off even easier than the last one. Okay. This one didn't have as much glue as, the, as it should. You could see where the lack of glue was. So this was a not a great one from the factory. I cleaned off the little spider web on that other one that I created with the glue. Hopefully I won't have to do that with this one because it's not easy to do without making a mark on the cone. Okay. Go around the edge again. I have a whetstone where I keep this uh, chisel sharp to make this easier. It's a good idea to have that. Because doing this dull means that you're going to likely make a mistake or slip and hurt yourself. As far as the kits, to refoam these, you can get them from Springfield Speaker Repair, Midwest Speaker, Speaker Exchange, Simply Speakers. All sell excellent kits. It's up to you where to get it from. Don't get the generic 10 inch. The compliance and the roll size are specific for these radiators. You gotta get the Boston 10 inch. Okay, let's run around the edge here. Make sure that we're clean little bit here that needs to go. I see a lot of DIYers going the cheapest route. And it's not going to sound the same if you use the, uh, the generic 10 inch surround. I'm going to get some surround off the edge of the basket here that's hanging on. I can't get it with a chisel without risking damaging the cone. They glued it too far in. Okay. Let's empty this out. Okie dokie. So let's get the surround on here. We'll just do it like we did the last time. Except this time we're going to hopefully not get a little snot trail of glue on the cone. Okay, that's the inner. Let's just run it along the outer here. Okay, and we'll pull this away so you don't get the little snot trail. Okay. Let's just go ahead and set this on here now. Okay, I think it's about centered. We'll just press that down and then we'll push up on the cone from the underside and then we'll finish attaching the surround to the cone. It's already getting tacky so that's making it real easy for me. 
you're going to do speakers for a living, spend the money and buy the black professional grade rubberized adhesive from Springfield Speaker. I'm not being paid to say this. This is a guy who's been doing this for a long time, telling you what the good stuff is. Because there's a lot of glues out there purported for speaker use, and yeah, you can use Elmer's glue, and yeah, you can use all sorts of stuff that's included with kits. But if you're doing them at high volume and you want the workmanship to last, use the uh, the black stuff. It's expensive. I think a 16-ounce bottle will set you back about $60, but it lasts forever. That's already more or less tacked in and set up, so we're good. Let's lay down the little trim ring here after I finish cleaning away the uh, old surround. This one's just going so much easier than the last one, partially because they didn't use enough glue during assembly. There's something about eight, late 80s, early 90s glue that was just not applied correctly for speaker purposes or just was terrible. That came off all nice and clean. Okay, so let's lay down another bead. Like I said, it doesn't need to be much. Just a little tiny trail to hold it on. Oh yeah, and don't get this stuff on your clothes or your fingers. Hand, skin, whatever. Clothes or skin, it's not coming out real easy. And it, it does contain hexane, so make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. The, the rushing noise you hear is the ventilator above me. Because uh, the fumes are toxic. Always make sure to take care of yourself. I've unfortunately seen many in the tech field who were genius techs that didn't leave enough time for themselves, who didn't take care of themselves. And I'm busy too much, and so that's why you haven't seen a lot of YouTube videos from me, because I'm trying to focus more on myself and staying healthy. I've lost about 20 pounds, so... I'm going to keep it up. You do you. Okay, so that looks healthy. Let's pop it back in, and then uh, we'll do a brief test on both speakers. Okay, so now that they've had a chance to cure a bit, what I'm going to do is run a, a sweep test through them, and we're going to see if there's any kind of resonance or anything nasty that's going to be... Uh, a deterrent to the sound. So we're going to start off at uh, about 10 hertz and we're going to go on up and see if there's any buzz or rattles. So headphone users beware. Let's see, I'm only running one speaker right now. Let's make sure I got the other one hooked up. Wires came undone. Okay, let's try this again. So you can see these are moving a lot, but these aren't moving much because these are tuned for a certain frequency. So watch what happens when I go up in frequency. reaching my excursion limit there. See when I get to about 50, these start to really move. these start to move and then they slow off again when you get to 60 and 70 
and these take over. So they're designing this as a mechanical crossover so that the passives can take care of certain frequencies that these can't given the acoustic limitations of these and the drivers. We were definitely maxing these out. The little quattering was the voice coil about smack in the back of the uh, magnet, so I have to back off there a little bit. But uh, about 52 is where these really light off. Make the whole building shake. And we'll attenuate a little bit and go all the way up. That's uh, 14K. That's about where my hearing starts to drop off. But I didn't hear any resonance, any scratching, anything like that from any of the drivers. So this makes me happy. And these are ready to go back home. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video about how to refoam your A120 passive radiators. And uh, just remember key factors, remove all the garbage. And then uh, get a reputable recone kit, or excuse me, refoam kit with the correct Boston surrounds. I showed you what they look like. And then uh, if you can, run some sweep Ugh, let's try that again. Run some sweep frequencies through it to make sure there's no cabinet resonance or uh, anything wrong with any of the drivers. So these are happy. Anyways, thanks for watching the videos, guys. More stuff to come.